Hello and welcome to Bite Size MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of the MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We're not associated with any MRCP examination organizations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam and indeed are not intended to be used as medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam and syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite-sized revision, give us a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's topic, which is on Buchordelia capacia under the section of infectious diseases. The epidemiology of Buchorderia is that it is a cause of nosocomial infection. It colonizes respiratory tract, especially in the cases of cystic fibrosis patients and other patients who are particularly at a high risk of having Buchorderia is those with chronic granulomatous disease and those patients who are receiving treatment on intensive care unit. The pathophysiology of Buchorderia is that it is a gram-negative rod-shaped bacterium. It causes opportunistic infections, primarily affecting individuals with cystic fibrosis. It also causes hospital-acquired or nosocomial infections among those patients with immunosuppression. Transmission is through direct contact, contaminated surfaces, aerosols, and it survives under harsh conditions due to metabolic versatility. The clinical manifestation is that the biggest concern really is with pneumonia, especially in the cases of cystic fibrosis patients, that it causes an increase in the burden of their cough, changes in the sputum production, worsening of their pulmonary function, and also exacerbating their respiratory symptoms. In non-cystic fibrosis patients, it could potentially lead to healthcare-associated pneumonia, especially if on mechanical ventilation or with chronic lung disease. The skin and soft tissue manifestation could potentially present as an infected wound with an increase in pain and erythema and swelling and discharge at the site of the infection. Conditions such as cellulitis may not be immediately linked to Buchorderia without proper microbial testing, which is why it's extremely important for your day-to-day patients who present on the unselected medical take and they're being queried for the possibility of cellulitis if there is any discharge or if there is any area of an infected wound, appropriate testing and swabbing needs to be sent for those patients. And finally, specific to the Capacia syndrome, which is one of the forms of presentation of Bohorderia, it is a rapidly progressive form of pneumonia with a marked increase in mortality and morbidity, unfortunately significantly affecting the patients with cystic fibrosis. It could lead to necrotizing pneumonia, which has a very poor prognosis. The management of this infectious disease is through tailored therapy based on susceptibility testing and urgent discussion with a microbiologist would be extremely recommended in these cases. Let's do some questions. Which feature of Bohorderia capacia primarily contributes to its notorious reputation in hospital setting? A. The rapid growth rate. B. The ability to form biofilm. C. High virulence in healthy adults. D. Ease of eradication. E. Sensitivity to disinfectants. Recall that the correct option in here would be option B, which is Buchorderia capacia's unique ability to form biofilms, which unfortunately adds to the challenge and complicates the treatment for those patients who have been infected with this bacteria. Thanks for listening.